2017, we have a party one unconscious at St. John's and I-35. 24-year-old female passing out at Tequila, a restaurant. She says that uh, breathing is not completely normal. She's not completely alert. Sounds like she was out of it for a little while. Can't imagine it. Uh, tequila, a restaurant down here. What could it possibly be? What could it possibly be? <laughs> My name's Matt. Are you with me a little bit? You know what's going on? Yeah. She's out of it. She is awake and talking, but I'm a little bit concerned because she does look pale. My gut instinct is something's going on. She doesn't look great. What are you experiencing? Are you dizzy? Does your stomach hurt at all? I'm checking her pulse. I'm checking her heart rate. I'm checking her blood pressure. Both of those come back very low, and those are both concerning for us. You feel like you're going to use the restroom? Is there any possibility of you being pregnant? Um, no, I can't. I feel weird again. Okay. Is this your wife? Yes. So she kind of fainted earlier? Yeah. Is that what happened yeah, just, just now? Like this. And, and I mean, her life, she gave she plasma. Was good. So I don't know if that has something to do with it. Tell me about the plasma. How long ago was that? Um, that was at uh, like 7 o'clock. PM? Yeah. She gave blood? Does she normally give blood? Yeah. She does? How often? It's like six or seven times a month. Really? Yeah. Plasma is the liquid portion of your blood. It carries all the important elements, your hemoglobin, your white blood cells around to the body. When they take off plasma, your body has to slowly replace that plasma. If it's taken off too frequently or without enough time in between, it could cause something like this. Yeah, no, I'm I'll, seeing I'll... Uh, Science Brady. Well, I'm all right. Uh, Do you hear about the uh, plasma yeah. six or seven times a month? Okay. Do so, they know that she's donating? Yeah, same place. Yeah, yeah, same place. Okay. So your blood pressure is low right now. Your heart's also beating a little bit slow. This may be related to the fact that you gave plasma earlier. The only way we're going to be able to find out is taking you to the hospital where they can do use lab work and x-rays and tests to try to figure out what it is. All right? Each person has their own tolerance for how frequently they can donate plasma. That being said, six or seven times in a month seems excessive to me. So you didn't even get to eat today. So it's May 18th. How many times do you think you donated this month in May? I would say like five times. Five times? Five or six times. Okay, all right. I didn't realize you could donate plasma that much, but... <laughs> she must have the good stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I got a follow up on her. Her potassium was really low. Huh. Her potassium was critically low, which I don't know how that yeah, is related, related to the to plasma. plasma. I don't know if it I is or not. I don't you know? know that either. What it comes down to, it's an electrolyte imbalance, right? Yeah. And electrolyte imbalance can affect the heart quite a bit. Yep. Very interesting, I thought. Three little five one. Oh, we got a call. Thirty old male with tightness in his chest. Thirty. Real like something. Are we popping tonight? He has chills. He has a new cough that recently started. Ooh. This very well could be. It could be a coronavirus. Event. Yeah. Or it could be coronavirus. Oh, you got that update, huh? That we got sent about the virus. Mm -hmm. It states, we are seeing a rise in COVID in the community as well as among our staff again. At this time, you should consider every person, including your partner, don't get near me, <laughs> as sick <laughs> or positive. There he is. He's outside. Three, two, five, one. Show's on scene. Cancel fire. Hi. Well, what's your name, a man's? Brian. So you're calling because your chest has been hurting? Yeah. OK. Like every time I call for here, it hurts. Have you been having any kind of fever? Uh, I you're did. sweating a little. Oh. And it's cold out here. <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> you warm, warm. For sure. Do you have any medical problems? High blood pressure, and uh, I do have asthma. OK. Are you having any shortness of breath? Uh, no, ma'am. OK. Have you been recently tested for COVID? Just relax. Uh, no, just relax, okay. relax. Exposed to anybody that might have it? Not that you know of. 
right, we're gonna get you in the truck. Um, we're gonna get you on some oxygen because your oxygen saturations are a little low. His O2 sats are 91%. A normal O2 sat is 94 to 100%. Since his O2 sats are low and his asthma isn't acting up, meaning I can't hear wheezes, that really alarms me. That has been like a telltale sign to us that this is COVID. Underneath the tongue. Shoo! 103.2. Oh. Ryan, <laughs> come on, man. Do you feel hot or do you feel cold right now? Uh, I'm actually cold. Can't keep you too covered up, yeah. though, because you are hot. Don't want to make you any warmer. Yeah, I can only imagine that you just do not feel good. Big stick, my man. One, two, three. All right, I don't want to scare you, Brian, but you are showing symptoms of COVID. So with your O2 sats being on the lower side, you got that super high temp. So um, they're gonna absolutely test you whenever we get to the hospital. Okay, my man. The way that he's presenting is extremely concerning because of that pre-existing condition. Knowing the way that asthma attacks your body and the way that COVID attacks your body, we want him to have the best possible chance to beat this. So you don't feel good, my man. I tried to find that. Look, I understand. Look, and you know what? I can give you that credit because you tried. There was one day, several months into COVID, and I just, I wanted to quit. I did not want to be here anymore. I was like, this is, I can't keep doing that. I can't keep bringing people to the hospital so they could die there. Thankfully, the more we know about the virus, the better the hospitals are getting at treating it. So hopefully this patient's gonna get to walk out of those hospital doors soon. Lovely. Dude, as soon as we walked up and like you could just see that guy glistening in the moonlight. So was it a known coat, like a known no, positive? Or? I mean, it wasn't a known positive. So this guy said that he had been having flu-like symptoms, pretty much like cough, no shortness of breath though, but like a cough, intermittent fever. So we ended up going to Ashermain and then the test came back within like five minutes. And he was positive. And he was positive. Gotcha. Y'all all good? Y'all got Aerocleave? Yeah. yeah. We got, a, we got you know, banished back to the station. After we run a call that we either suspected as COVID or we 100% knew it was COVID, then we'll go back to the station to where they have this decontamination system that will actually mist chemicals into the back of the truck so it gets into all those little tiny crevices that we could have missed. I got to work today, turned on the truck, and I could tell that the that the it was truck airplane last airplane. night. Yep. And I was like, oh, okay, I feel so good. Like, <laughs> it's comforting to know yeah, that, like, everyone's going through those measures to make sure yeah. that everyone stays safe. New Orleans EMS takes COVID very seriously. We've seen what it can do to people. It's scary because we really still don't know exactly the depths of how it's affecting the body. And so we have to take extra precautions so we can minimize any kind of risk to ourselves and any kind of risk of spreading it to somebody else. All right, y'all get back out there. If you need to come back, then come back and get aeroclaved again. Yeah. Grab a dub dub. You guys be safe. <laughs> Safe, be strong. Let's do this. Get that stretcher in here. You're gonna bleed to death. Ransom, <sighs> ransom, You know they're not dead. I can work with that.